What's going on people, we are Tottenham TV here and welcome back to another episode of the Premier League Spurs Perspective where we take a look at the weekend's games and we put a bit of a Spurs spin on it and there's obviously that little competition we got going on as well. Five points for a correct score, one point for a correct result. The scores on the doors at the moment before this weekend was 66-61 to me. I mean, I, I had a big, big lead in a 10 point, just over a 10 point lead and Simeon clawed it back but I restored parity just before this weekend and now now let's see how this weekend has gone as we start off with Newcastle against Villa which finished 1-1 I predicted 1-1 Simeon predicted 1-0 to Villa so that's a straight five point five pointer to me Sim. Close. Oh. <laughs> I remember I was I was with you and it was like well, five minutes ago I'm like oh, it's nil nil we didn't I didn't even look at the we didn't even I wasn't following the game I just looked at my phone I was and like it went five point to you and well, we, we, yeah, we didn't even me. know that it's just like it was nil nil I was like oh, far it looks like it's going to finish nil nil five minutes I'm looking for a late Villa goal and then I checked my phone like ten minutes later like one one how I was like, how <laughs> it was nil nil with five minutes to go how's that happened I was like for God's sake and then I look at like the score it's like three minutes to go Villa score and then ninety fourth new guys like for god's sake <laughs> unbelievable Ridiculous. unbelievable Ridiculous. Uh, but uh, yeah, we didn't actually see Adil. Well, we were both having dinner, so we didn't yeah. see this game at the time. But um, not a great result for Villa, I would say, in the circumstances, given how bad Newcastle have been of late. Great point for Newcastle, who if they can keep just knocking away a couple of draws here and there, maybe they can uh, uh, claw their way to safety. But they probably need a couple wins at this rate uh, to really um, be sure of it. But they're not losing. I thought, with, you know, say Maximam and Almiron and whoever's out and Wilson being out for until April, um, I thought they were going to be going losing streak but they've just uh, drawn a few games now which is um, probably good for them in terms of their right against uh, the draw last week against West Brom and against Villa I think this draw is very damaging for Villa in terms of any hopes they had of a top four finish. Um, they're probably going to have to look more like top six at the moment, but they're still in it. And Grealish to come back, um, we've got um, with the, the we got them on uh, Sunday. Yeah. So a big game that is for both teams. Yeah, I think Villa Villa are a bit stuttering at the moment. Newcastle, I think just every point is just so vital, isn't it? Yeah. So um, good point for Villa. Uh, good point for Newcastle. Not so great for Villa. They're still only they're still only two points um, above Fulham at the drop with the game in hand, but um, so it's very tight. Um, and but it's a good point for them. Yeah, they needed the point. Let's move on to Leeds against Chelsea, which finished nil nil. I went two nil to Chelsea. You went three one to Chelsea. Mm. So both of us a bit wide off the mark here. Um, but everyone expected a Chelsea win in this game. Leeds uh, held strong, kept a clean sheet they first did. and foremost. And uh, I think it was a close game. I was watching. I was I was watching it and. Leeds had chances. Mendy made a few really good saves. Mestier mm. as well had have had an um, uncharacteristically good game, you'd say. <laughs> um, and I think a nil-nil was deserved. I think Chelsea probably didn't deserve the win. I think, yeah, I think the draw was a fair result. But you, this is the last game probably you expected it to be nil-nil in with Leeds, how they play. And um, and you're expecting at least someone to score. But nil-nil, it the proved. Thing is, Chelsea seemed a bit tired. The thing is, the way Chelsea set up... It's it's you know if they don't get a goal it's it's very likely to be nil nil isn't it yeah because they just don't concede their defensive shape is really good yeah um and if their strikers are just not on it I mean it's very likely to be nil nil and that was the case in this game uh, but it's surprising because the Leeds defense is just has been you know you don't know what Leeds are going to turn up at the end of the day because you know they can have an amazing defense one game and then let in five goals the next game it's just the the nature of this Leeds team isn't it yeah absolutely and uh, but it was a great result for Chelsea. Um, sorry for Leeds and a really poor result for Chelsea but Chelsea their next three games man I can't see them dropping any points You're West Brom Palace then Brighton I mean but you thought they wouldn't have dropped points against Leeds so yeah. uh, you never know it's true you never know West Brom they'll fight for every point exactly. but it's going to be tough it's going to be tough to claw our way back to uh, a top but, four finish but the last like three or four games of the season Chelsea have all the big guns apparently. yeah they so got they got um, last few games of the season they got uh, or we're still in contention by that stage. They got City, Arsenal, and last game they have Leicester. No, so we yeah. have Leicester. They have Leicester and then Villa last game. So there you go. They got. So they've got. Yeah, the we could be outside by then. That's the problem. That's the worry. True. Um, all right. So that's the second game. The scores on the doors is seventy-one sixty-one to myself. As we move on to Everton against Burnley, which finished two-one to Burnley. Um, I went 1-0 Everton, you went 2-0 Everton, another one where we're completely wide off the mark and it's that 
Jacqueline Hyde Everton again. I mean, their yeah. home form is just r- ridiculous this season. Didn't surprise me. Uh, I mean, it's, that's been kind of the story of Everton season. They, you know, uh, every time you, th- you think they're, they're building something, they have a result like this. And it was a very, very poor a bit result. Like Spurs. Exactly. Very similar to Spurs. Um, and Burnley, well worth the points as well. I watched the game. Uh, they deserved it. They could even got more goals, I would say. Um, Burnley. Everton did get back in the game um, with Calvert Lewin, but they didn't really threaten to steal a point out of this game. And, po- and um, I thought Burnley were well worth it. McNeil with a great goal as well. Fantastic goal he scored to put them 2 0 up. Up and uh, fully deserved for mm. for Burnley. It's only Burnley, but uh, it's only yeah, Burnley. exactly. But when we when we battered Burnley, everyone said, "Oh, it's only Burnley. It's only Burnley." Since then, drawing with Leicester, drawing with Arsenal, and now beating Everton away. So, if it's only Burnley, then I'll take points off Burnley every week. So, yeah, um, uh, and that should be or them or okay for safety. Mm. And they're now f- um, seven points clear of the drop, and um, I think that should be okay now. Mm. Agreed. Uh, Fulham, Manchester City finished three 0 to Man City. I was just one goal off. I went two 0 You went two one. Uh, but the steam, the steam train keeps rolling on, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, Man City keep go- keep going on three 0 It was uh, it's actually a very close game going into half time. Scored a lot of late goals, didn't they? Yeah, Fulham. Were, um, well, they got one just after half time. Then they got a couple of late goals, I think. Um, but Fulham were hanging in there. It was a very close game. I thought in the first half it was very very even, and um, Fulham would have been um, ag- aggrieved not to. Uh, um, to have only gone in nil nil, although they probably didn't deserve to go in the lead, but it was it was like they were playing well. But then as soon as City got that goal, there was only one winner really, and um, they gave they pretty much gave him the second goal as well, which uh, they'll be very very frustrated about to give to give him the second goal. But John Stones, um, continuing again, again, again. Uh, continuing to carry on his good form, and then the two strikers, Jesus and Aguero, both getting on the score sheet with Aguero's first goal in like a year. Wow! So uh, it's a long Is that a penalty? time. Yeah, penalty scored, but. You know, you got to take them as they come, don't you? And uh, another good one for City, another another step towards their inevitable Premier League title. Mm. 14 points clear at the top now. Yeah, um, yeah. Astonishing form from Man City. You have forgot Palace West Brom. Um, uh, Palace West Brom uh, finished 1 0 to Palace. I went 1 0 to West Brom. You went 1 1. So, but yeah, very close. Very close. Um, but uh, I think. That's a really bad result for West Brom. I think they really, really needed to get something out of this game if they had any sort of lingering hopes of staying up. They're currently how many points off the drop now? Ten points. We're and Newcastle with Chelsea up next with Newcastle and well, Brighton both having a game in hand on them in 16th and 17th. I mean, it's not looking good for West Brom yeah. at the moment, and especially with the Palace team with nothing to play for, you'd think they'd, they 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 could really um, take the game to Palace and get something out of this game, but wasn't to be. And uh, they look like a the team that's destined for the, you know, the relegation at the moment. Sometimes with these teams with nothing to play, it's just a weight lifted off your shoulders. You know, you just go out there, you do your stuff, um, don't really mind if you lose or you win or you draw. And when when the pressure's off, though, more more chance times out, out of not, you get the points. You know what I mean. Mm. Um, and with West Brom, you know they're fighting for every ball, every chance, every goal. And I thought at one stage Big Sam was going to do the job, but unfortunately, I don't think that's the case anymore. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. it doesn't look like it. Um, let's move on to Southampton Brighton, which finished two one to Brighton at St Mary's. I went two one Southampton. You went one. You went two two. You went for yeah, a Desmond. Very close. So very you were close. very close. Both of us don't get any points in this one. Uh, did you see any of this game? Yes, I've had to man. An- another defeat for them. It was a very. It was actually a really open game, and both teams really going hell for leather, leather yeah. for the points. Um, I thought Southampton tried really, really hard to arrest their slump after the, you know they got a win a couple of weeks ago against Southampton, but since then they've lost another couple of games now. Um, Brighton with vital, vital three points their relegation, um, their their relegation worries. Um, Trossard was with a really, really nice winner as well. Um, I think they, they fully deserve the win. Southampton um, could probably may, maybe starting to get a bit worried. I mean, they're on the same points as Burnley, so I think they should be okay for relegation. I think, but just, I think their early season form just about uh, saved them. them. And I think they'll get they'll probably, from now to the end of the season, probably get what the one or two wins they need to uh, stay up. But um, Hassan Hutu has really uh, fallen off a cliff at the moment. I think really that's has. now, what, nine defeats in ten or something like that. Crazy. It's really bad, really bad form. Like, unbelievable, unbelievable bad form for uh, Southampton but Brian I think they're uh, too I th- good to go down who Southampton Brian. 
Brighton, yeah. Brighton and Blue, they play well every game. Literally yeah. every game they play well. And, and uh, a lot of the times they're unlucky not getting the points, but they got the points this time. And um, it was a well-deserved win. Well-deserved win. I think if Brighton stay up and manage to get a few, like two or three really good signings in the summer, astute signings, and I think they can um, push on from mid-table, maybe even the lower half of the top half next season. You know, I've been, I've been really impressed with Shea Adams, though. He scored a really nice goal in this game. And um, he's actually one of these players who... It's not just his goals he brings. He's actually a very, very underrated as his all-round play. He's a really good passer of the ball, actually, Shea Adams. Like, surprisingly so. And, you know, he he kind of filled in so well for Danny Ings all season when he's been injured. So, yeah, I think you're right. Shea, Shea Adams, Adams is very underrated. He's coming along. He's still pretty young, I think, Shea Adams as mm, well. He is. So, maybe that's one to look at as, like, uh, someone who could bolster our forward line, potentially. All right. Let's move on to Leicester against Sheffield United. 5-0 mm. to Leicester um, I went for 2 0, you went for 1 0. Uh, so yeah. we both gained a point there. But Leicester, uh, they just would just, at one point, it's just every attack was a goal. Yeah, literally. Um, I think, look, Sheffield United losing their manager, I think, especially a manager like Chris Wilder, who has been so synonymous with that club for the past three years, and he created yeah. such a great atmosphere, bringing them up from League One. Yeah. To the Premier League, I, I always thought that it was going to have a bad effect getting rid of him. And obviously, look, they're down. Did, Everyone did knows he, they're down. Did he leave or did he get sacked? Um, they're saying they're saying he left, but I, I, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Uh, who knows in it? What, what's the what really going on? I'm sure he'll find another job. Into the club, apparently. Yeah, it makes sense because they didn't invest, did they, in the summer? They signed Brewster, but now was an awful signing. And um, they, I think they needed to push on after a great season last season, yeah. but they really got every inch, ounce of ability it was, out of that squad. He, he, he was like a miracle man last it's season. It's almost Chris like Wilder. it's almost like Pochettino in a way. Like he kind kind of got every ounce of ability, and we didn't invest, and we couldn't kick on because mm. we didn't invest, and we expected to do the same, and we couldn't do the same. Yeah, a different uh, level, but yeah, different exactly, a different level. Uh, but obviously, Sheffield United, um, obviously, don't have as much money as Spurs, so it's hard to compare. But I always thought if the, now they got rid of him, like the only thing kind of, because even though they're losing every week and they're going down, they never really like chucked in the towel in any game. There's always like very narrow defeats. It's always very close in every yeah. game and they always put up a fight and as you can just see like there was just a lack of quality there. But now Wilder's gone, I can see them starting to get battered a bit and I yeah. think this is, might be the start of it. I, th- I can, because cause I think he was the only one kind of just holding it together a bit even though they're going yeah. down but now he's gone. So ultimately, they got a championship squad there. They do completely. Mid-table championship yeah. squad as well probably. Yeah. So, um, like they did well, they did so well. Like so, uh, overachieved so much last season, and uh, they now that now they're probably at their level, and um, it's harsh, but it is what it is. But look, Leicester, another good win for them, um, and the, they're getting they're tightening their grip on that top four. Still got a lot of tough games to come. Uh, Man City coming up next for them, um, but uh, at the moment you got to say they're. Uh, they're doing their job and um, I thought they'll crumble they haven't quite done that yet but I think the tougher test will come for them we'll see how they how they react so the last two wins against Sheffield United and Brighton are very very much needed with their running coming in but I still have a feeling uh, um, with, the, with the games coming up they're, they're going to fall they're going to falter let's hope so man because we need to find some sort of way in there yeah um, Arsenal against Spurs. Uh, yeah. Let's just breeze past that one. Uh, we all know what the score was. Uh, our predictions was I went 2-1 Spurs. Sim went 3-2 Spurs. Uh, so none of us get a point there. Let's move on. Well, actually, let's talk about the penalty for that one because I actually had a conversation with um, Dale Johnson on Twitter because I was asking him about the penalty about because they were saying about um, Dermot Gallagher was saying how VAR couldn't intervene um, in, the, in the penalty because Michael Oliver... Had given that had given uh, his decision. He says they're not there to re-referee decisions. Yeah, they're not really there to re-referee decisions. He says he says um, it, Dermot Gallagher's opinion was it's not a penalty, but VAR cannot overturn the decision because Michael Oliver um, he sees Sanchez come across with his boot high. I don't think he sees the air shot. The referee made an on-field decision. The VAR got to, has got to stick with the on-field decision, but it's very very lucky. Dermot as well agreeing it's not a penalty. So then I was thinking, well, where's the line between what is and isn't a penalty or what not what what VAR can intervene with and basically Dale Johnson uh, ESPN great Twitter account he does a Monday every Monday go to all the VAR decisions explains them all really clearly yeah. and it's a really great thread and he was basically saying that VAR can uh, can't intervene when uh, VAR can only intervene if if basically after each incident when the VAR is given a, when referee's given a penalty he'll basically explain to VAR what he's seen 
And if v- if if what he's seen correlates with what's happened, then VAR can't intervene. So what what Mike Oliver said basically was Sanchez came in with a with a with a reckless challenge and um, and he didn't get the ball and and he fouled Lacazette and it's a penalty. So what and and what the picture showed was basically um, Sanchez did go in with a with a high boot and he didn't make contact with Lacazette. So they said they can't intervene. But if Michael Oliver basically would have said something different, if, if he would have said like, uh, I don't know, whatever, if he would have basically said something that didn't correlate to the images, then that's when VAR can intervene. If they, if that, then that's a clear and obvious error because the referee clearly didn't see what happened. So VAR isn't there to, to re-referee the whole, each decision. He's It's just there to, if the referee misses what actually happened, then it intervenes. How, how do you feel like that? Do you feel that's the right way to go or do you feel that the correct decision needs to be had in every sort of uh, situation i think that's the only i think this is the only way to um give the referee still some say in what happens i look i, I do actually think it was the right thing unfortunately i don't think it was a penalty i think the referee got it wrong but var has made that decision yeah, it's got to stay with that var is not there to co- make every decision correct it's there to fix anything the referee's missed basically so the referee didn't miss it he just made he he got it wrong basically he's he thinks that challenge was a foul when it, I, I don't think it was a foul but, can, but can he still the ref- saw the challenge can the referee go to the screen and and re-fix his decision if he's got it wrong himself kind of thing no he can only go to the screen if what he thought happened didn't happen if it because because what he thought happened in that situation did kind of happen. Because Sanchez yeah. went in, didn't get the ball, and con- and made contact with Lacazette in that sense. I don't think it was a penalty because I think Lacazette kind of makes contact with him. But that what Oliver thought he saw pretty much happened. But if Oliver would have said like something else, like which didn't happen, and then and, and then VAR could then say, look, that didn't happen. You should take a look at the screen because you're you you've uh, missed what actually happened. Basically, that's mm. the that's the rules of VAR, um, which is a bit annoying because it wasn't a penalty, but it is what it is, unfortunately. Unfortunately, so I mean, with all that dominance they had, I mean, they really should have battered us on the weekend. They the should way have. We played and the way and the way they played, but. Ultimately, they only beat us over the deflected goal and a dodgy penalty. Yeah, that's what happened. And and also, uh, like Loris only made one save the whole game, mm. so like it was like they weren't really that great going forward. But they were, they did dominate us and they deserved the win. We we 100%. didn't show up. We just yeah. didn't show up. Yeah. Uh, Manchester United West Ham finished one nil to Man United. I went one one. You went two one. So you finally gain a point on me there. Sixty well seventy three sixty four. So nine points in the gap. Uh, did you watch this game? Well, we were both live well, on we were YouTube. Both live. We, so. Yeah, I know it was finished one nil. They got um, it was an own goal, pretty much. Which Craig won Dawson. The game. He's How been in great form. form. Yeah, he's been in great form. But I thought United were kind of lucky uh, from what I saw to get the win. I thought um, it was a very close game, and it probably should have finished nil nil. If Jesse Lingard was playing, it would be a different story. Exactly. <laughs> but it's one of those games where like it's really tight and like um, a goal either way, like one nil wins it and they got the lucky own goal basically. Yeah. And that was it. And um, they got the win. And again, and I think that might just seal their top four place. Yeah, now. I, mean, I think so. I, I think, think, it, I think if they would have dropped points, it would have been a lot closer, but now they've got that win. They're now, they're nine points clear of a uh, fifth place. At West they've been Ham. like in the last, like what, six weeks or something. They've been stuttering to the top four. Yeah, Loads I mean, of nil nils. I mean, dull, dull games. They you stuttered know what I mean? again. I thought, I thought it yeah. stuttered again um, against West Ham, but they got over the line just about own goal. And you get the rub the green sometimes. That's it's what like they got in this top four races. Like who could be worse, me or you? You know what I mean. Everyone, yeah. everyone doesn't want to get. It's been like that for a few years, to be honest. Yeah, it seems to be because I think apart we, from like the top two or something, but this year it's just the top one. Yeah, top one. Um, you know, the top four race has always been like who can stutter over the line first. Yeah, it wasn't that under Pochettino, but um, maybe in his last season. Yeah, in the last couple of years, maybe. I think his last season it was, yeah. but not in his last few years. We actually did quite well. But yeah, I think since that 2018-19 season, yeah, it's pretty much been like, who's there by default in a way. All right, in the last game of the weekend, last night was Wolves against Liverpool at the Molyneux. Finished 1-0 to Liverpool. I went 2-1 Liverpool, you went 2-0 to Liverpool. So we both gain a point there. And this week finishes 74-65 to me, nine points. Um, what did you make out of the game last night? Um, yeah, I saw a bit of it. I think uh, Jota, getting a, he's back in the side, getting a goal against his former club. Nice yeah, goal as well. it was always going to happen, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, 
And Liverpool, I thought, to be honest, Wolves deserve something out of that game, to mm. be honest. I thought they were very, very unlucky not to get anything out of that game. Um, obviously, Patricio having that uh, bad injury late in the game. Um, and apparently as well, it's, it's making... Um, uh, people rethink the offside rule because it was one of those incidents where it was one of those incidents where he kept the flag down and I then know. he got injured and then he put I the know, flag up so he an offside. But you know that those kind of things can s- so easily happen in in open play as well. You know what I mean? When when the without an offside rule, so I think look. But is I it they're it's arguing e- it's endangering the players? When it's an extreme circumstance when they when, when the linesman knows it's offside, but he can't put his flag up because of the they have to wait for the VA, they have to wait to see if the goal goes in or not, and then a player gets injured when the play should have been stopped so i can see that point but it's uh, a very I, extreme circumstance yeah though, i mean you know it's going to be interesting how they solve it because yeah this whole keeping the flag up and down thing I, I get it and i kind of agree with it in a sense because i think it's right when uh, you don't want goals being ruled out for offside when they're onside mm-hmm. but as well it, co- it causes a lot of confusion it, it does, does cause a lot of confusion and like for example um, you know, you can win a corner when you're offside and stuff like that. I, I don't know how exactly it works. It's very strange, but... Um, how would you fix it? I don't know. They're, they're potentially, they're bringing this automated offside thing. Okay. They're trialing this technology, which apparently could get an offside decision within three seconds. So maybe that's the way forward. We'll have to wait and see for the technology. But what's the actual offside rule, though? Is it still the same rule? Yeah, it'll it be has- the same. If you're off, you're off right. at the moment, yeah. Um, and I, I think that's going to be interesting. Um, we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, that is. Well, I just want to say about Rui Patricio as well, yeah. because obviously it was during that offside decision where um, he. W- well, who was it? Was it Connor Cody that went clattering into his it head? It was. Um, it was a really, really bad uh, injury. He was unconscious for five minutes. Um, but hap- uh, luckily, after the game, um, Nuno says that he was sitting up, speaking, and he remembered everything. So that's really, really good to hear, because um, obviously it was a very bad he- head injury. But it sounds like he is okay. Uh, yeah, so it sounds like he's thing. fine, which is good. And and um, Liverpool now, they're above us by a point. We have a game in hand in the race for the top four. So the top four, as it stands, if we just go from well, go from, go from yeah, from Leicester down. Leicester on fifty six, Chelsea on uh, fifty one, West Ham on forty eight, Liverpool on forty six, Everton on forty six. Spurs on 45. We're hanging in there by a thread. With Spurs and Everton both having games in hand. And I think we're playing them next week. I think the games in hand are next week, I think, because it's FA Cup next week. Yeah, so FA, our game in hand is Villa this weekend. We're playing Villa away next week. So uh, And uh, West Ham play Arsenal next week. So mm-hmm. big game there. So if somehow we can get three points what against is, Aston what Villa. What we want out of that West Ham Arsenal game? Unfortunately, probably want to Arsenal win. Mm. Unfortunately, that's how it is. Probably a draw. Draw would be nice. But. Um, Probably uh, anything but a West Ham win. You don't want West Ham winning that game. And if we do win that game against Aston Villa um, next week, which is a massive game now, I think if we lose that, I do think it might be curtains for top four mm. with uh, with nine games to go. But we're now ten. If with nine games to go, with three points off top four, then look, we're in the race and we're in the fight, and that's all we can ask for at this stage of the season. Just put ourselves in it. Um, but the, yeah, so it's a massive game. If we win that game, we're on forty-eight points and we'll be three points behind Chelsea. Um, although they've got a good run in at the moment before the last few games of the season we've got Everton coming up and United coming up so it was obviously tough yeah, games a record against the top 10 doesn't bode well does no, it no it doesn't and and obviously it's going to be di- difficult even even if we win the game against Villa it's going to be very very difficult but all and you cannot Le- with Leicester coming up last game of the season as well yeah, look, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying we're favourites by any stretch of the imagination. It's going to be easy, but at least we're still there. We're still there in the fight, and uh, at least we're not out of it, which is important, I think, because it keeps up motivation. It keeps up um, motivation to get results each week in the in the league campaign. If we're out of it, all of a sudden you can you might see a bit of a drop off, and you might see like pl- uh, us a bit phoning it in in the league, and even it might even come to a stage where we're saying might as well rest players in the league now because we just got to the fully concentrate on Europa. The thing is, though, we, we can't be playing in this Europa Conference League next season. And I believe us, what, seventh in the league or eighth in the league goes there. So we really don't want to be finishing in that space, especially if we don't win the Europa League or something like that. Yeah, we just need a strong end to the season. We, the Villa game might be a bit of a do or die in terms of top four. So um, hopefully we get three points in that one and see where it takes us. But damaging defeat this weekend. But looking at the league table, all is not lost just yet. 
All right, so there you have it. That is the end of our Premier League perspective. The scores on the doors at the end of this round is 74-65 to myself. Let me know in the comment section below who you think will win next week's round. The predictions will be out on Friday. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.